Last video I showcased the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games for the NES. So now let's go back to 1989 and this time showcase the first TMNT arcade game. On October 11th, 1989, we got the TMNT arcade game. The game was the first of few to showcase a four-player cabinet. The vast majority of arcade games were two-player designed. To see a cabinet with more than two-player design was truly a sight to see. But besides the interesting design, is the game itself any good? For the most part, yes, in both commercial success and critical success. The first good is that the first few seconds of the cartoon is displayed when the arcade is booted up. Huh, I wonder how they managed to get the song. Before I get too far ahead, every arcade camera that you lay eyes on had an attract mode to showcase the game itself. What that means is that a short demo is played to garner attention from the crowd. If a person is interested, they can insert a coin into the slot and start playing. And that's how revenue was earned. One unique feature was that the more money you put in, the more lives you get. This feature wasn't very common and only a handful of beat-em-ups utilized it. If I remember correctly, if you open the door beneath the control deck, you can see a little lever that triggers when the coin taps it. I'm getting way off course here and should mention one other unique feature, enemy count. The more players that played, the more enemies appeared, and the bosses got a bit more difficult. With my sidetrack cleared, let's focus on the game. The plot starts off with the turtles rescuing April O'Neil from a fire, but Shredder kidnaps her and it's up to the turtles to rescue April. I know the story is basic, but it's the 1980s. What'd you expect? One unique feature is that there's voice acting throughout, but I feel that there's something missing. The voices aren't from the original actors. I'm pretty sure getting the actual actors would have been expensive. My best guess would have been royalty fees? Boy, I've been sidetracked by all this. I forgot I'm reviewing a game. Anyways, the gameplay is basic and as already mentioned in part 1, you get a basic attack, jump kick, aerial attack, and special. But there's something that doesn't quite fit. And that's Raphael's special. Instead of copying his brothers, he gets an ineffective roll into a kick attack. Any reason why? The graphics are quite colorful and the animation is quite smooth. One criticism is that each level is quite short. Level 2 tried to hide this by making the stage have three sections, but it's still short. And this is where the NES port gets a point for length. The soundtrack is nicely done, but for some odd reason, the NES is better. The difficulty not counting for being able to keep putting coins into the machine is a bit on the easy side. The NES version's difficulty was perfect. While the game itself has aged a little nicely, it hasn't quite aged well enough to today's standards and only gets three pizzas out of five. Let's fast forward to 1991 and Turtles in Time. Can this game do better? Not really. The biggest flaw was that the gameplay was too similar to the first. There were some minor improvements, but it's not quite enough. For one thing, each turtle does play a little bit differently. They also have their own special attack. This comes at a price of some energy. One awesome feature is that you can fling enemies into the screen. The voice acting and sounds are a little bit better, but still no original voice actors. The game itself is longer, but also harder. Hmm. I guess I can't complain about challenge. One thing I couldn't stand were the cheesy puns if certain actions were performed. Welcome to the 90s, home to more cheesy puns than a cheese factory. Before I forget, the story is that Crane has taken the Statue of Liberty from New York and it's up to the turtles to return the statue back. Once again, a cliché story. But what the turtles don't know is that Shredder sends our four turtles through different time eras. Hmm, haven't we seen this before? With all that, does this make this game inferior to the first? That's a matter of perspective. Turtles in Time Arcade gets two pizzas out of five. Next time, part three and Turtles on the go.